Question of today. Why singing or singing technique is so intuitive in comparison to other instruments? And whether vocal technique can be put on scientific scales? 100%. But first, let's discover what is so intuitive about vocal technique. In traditional musical thinking, more intuitive instruments are those instruments who are not well tempered, like violin, wind, and of course, voices. In spite of the fact that voices and guitars and violins are placed in the same category of so-called intuitive instruments, voice has one specific difference from all of them. The voice strings or vocal folds and all the resonance system is placed inside the human body. So, in order to make a proper vocal sound, we have to activate those organs of our system that are governed intuitively by our subconsciousness. There were great attempts to put singing technique on a total scientific base, like we know from Lily Lemon's book How to Sing. We can only imagine how exactly the research of this magnitude was done by Lily Lemon. She definitely asked prominent singers about their sensations and feelings, and she tried to make it uh, on a scientific basis. For example, I imagine she met Enrico Caruso and uh, asked uh, Enrico, when you sing this beautiful B-flat, how do you feel it? Where do you feel it? And then, of course, according to her research, she tried to universalize it and make it a theory. According to her book, she was absolutely against registral division. Ironically, followers of that theory created exactly the registral divisions. But in one thing, Lily Lemon was absolutely right, that singer should not be looking for some kind of resonance sensations in a whole, but rather in his own body and understand his own sensations. Because understanding of your own voice never comes through theory only. It comes through your personal experience. But so-called vocal empirical schools that are based on vocal sensations are usually very limited and sometimes very dangerous for young singers. Because those empirical schools are usually based on personal sensation of a particular singer. And if this kind of sensations doesn't match the sensations of a young student, the young student is in big trouble. To my point, teacher should suggest certain sensations, but students should be aware that those sensations are very relative. Most of the successful students will probably never understand what they are really doing with their voices, because their technique with years becomes more and more subconscious. Oh, we clearly see the confusion in the face of a student when not very satisfying teacher tells him or her to support well. He says it with such an authority as if you were doing it all your life and just you make a little mistake. In fact, these kind of suggestions or terms, yes, they sound English or Italian, but they're really Chinese to us. When students ask specifically oh, how should he support, some teachers say, well, support with your diaphragm. Okay, this is another word that student will never understand before he experience it. True vocal training is coming through trial and error. Student sings a note or a phrase and a teacher approves it or disapproves it. The moment teacher approves that particular vocal phonation, student should be very attentive to his own sensations. These personal sensations will be his own guide to the right sound. For that reason, it's very important what kind of vocal taste your teacher has. Because what's beautiful for teacher A, it might be unacceptable for teacher B. And for that I also 
often they ask uh, what kind of teachers we should looking for. First of all, there is no like a straight recommendation in that sense. One teacher may bring a great Mozartian style and teach their students to be like great Mozartian singers and be disastrous for those who want to sing Verdi or Puccini. If your teacher is a still singing teacher, it's not bad to just check it out the way he sang. So-called respecting nature of a singer teachers are very rare because, first of all, one has to know how to discover one's natural voice and then teach not according to some theory or some great voice that this teacher particularly adores. Let's say he likes Pavarotti or he likes uh, Alfredo Kraus or he likes Giuseppe Giacomini, but according to your own nature. And that also requires tremendous effort to do so, because it's easier to teach according to theory. In method type of teaching, teacher always tries to fit his student voice according to the theory he knows. Or if it's an empirical teacher, he will try to fit your voice into the voice ideal he knows. But I have to admit that it's not only teacher's fault to try to fit his student voice into some kind of a theory or especially into some kind of ideal uh, voice at alone. Some students come with an attitude that they want to sound exactly the way Alfredo Kraus sounded or exactly the way Giacomini sounded or any favorite singer they adore. Celebrity teachers can be very dangerous for young voices. To reason my statement, I just give you one simple example. Teaching and performing is not the same thing. Great singers can give great master classes on certain uh, areas and roles, but some of them unfortunately come with this arrogance. Yes, I'm a great singer, so therefore I'm a great teacher. Great Enrico Caruso realized it very much. He said that the singing and teaching are so different that he will probably never be a great teacher. Of course, I'm not saying that the great singers are doomed to be lousy teachers. That's not what I'm saying. But those great singers who come to teach, they have to be very, very humble and realize that teaching is a different profession. Mein ganzes Herz, wo du nicht bist, kann ich nicht sein.